This is the Kia EV9, the long anticipated full size SUV from Kia. And it's kind of an important car because you see in the age of electric cars, as we're starting to see more and more of these, size is key. The bigger the SUV, the lower the range. So it's a balance of maximizing battery size, weight of the vehicle, efficiency, and having enough room for everybody in the EV9 includes seating for up to seven. The vehicle that we're standing in front of right now is actually the GT line, which is the top trim. And the GT line starts at a staggering $74,000 roughly, but the base model starts closer to $55,000. So still quite a bit of money, but when you consider the fact that it's not just capable of being a seven passenger SUV, it's actually a good sized seven passenger SUV. For example, our Tesla Model Y does indeed seat seven, but that's not really truly seven people in that vehicle. It's very, very tight in the back seat, but this car gives you the actual ability of having seven people. And we'll go on the inside here in just a little bit to show you what that looks like. Now you're basically looking at three different trim options for the EV9, the light, the wind, the land, and the GT line. Now, as you might be able to see behind me with nature inspired booth here at CES, that is definitely what's inspiring. The trim names for this long gone, it seems are the days of traditional naming for different trim levels. But the good news is this, even the base trim, this car comes standard with most of the features you're going to want anyway. So stepping up to different trim packages definitely will get you value for that money. But even in the base configuration, most people would be pretty happy yeah. with the package that includes all those features. As an example, Highway Assist 2 or their version of Autopilot comes standard on the EV9, which is nice. It's basically allowing the vehicle to do all the driving for you while you're paying attention, of course, in your own lane. So as traffic speeds up, slows down, the car will do it all for you. So it really takes a lot of the work out of road trips. Of course, under the hood of the car, we don't see an engine because Electric cars give you the ability to have this space instead of a gas engine, what they call a frunk. Now, unfortunately, the size of this frunk is pretty small, which is consistent with other electric cars from Kia. You're gonna be able to fit the charging equipment essentially in there, maybe a mobile charger with you, not much else. You're not gonna be able to put groceries in there. This is definitely not the F-150 Lightning but it does give you a little bit of extra space for additional items. Now, because there's not an engine here, let's talk range. The light package gets you 230 miles of range. Now, if you step up to the long range version of that rear wheel drive light, you're gonna get the most range and it's just over 300 miles. Now, the next trim up is going to get you 280 miles and then the GT line, like we see here, 270. Now here on the back of the Kia EV9, we have a very nice cargo space and of course a power lift gate here. And if I'm not mistaken, that power lift gate comes standard on the EV9. And you can see even with the seat up, some pretty good space back here. You do have a 12 volt on the side and you also have right here for an emergency exit should you get stuck in the back. Now, instead of having a gas tank, of course you get a sub trunk. And in this case, it's pretty limited in size like we saw on the front and the seats back here actually recline, which is a pretty nice feature considering how far back that reclines. And of course, pretty easy to fold these down, just pull on the latch. It's got a nice strong spring, so it folds down all on its own pretty well. Another really cool feature about the EV9 is once these seats are folded down, you have all of your big gear here that you wanna load in. By the press of a button, you can raise and lower the second row, which is actually, a really nice convenient feature. One of the best features of this Kia EV9 and other electric Kias is CCS is going away and we are going to NAX or most commonly called the Tesla connector. And Kia is claiming that we will start seeing ports with the Tesla plug in them as soon as the end of this year. So we're not talking years in the future, it's well on its way. Here on the second row of the EV9, this is where things are gonna start to look quite a bit different depending on the trim package you go with. This being the GT line, this is gonna have everything. So keep that in mind, but it is nice because this, if you're a parent, you know how awesome this is. Also, as you can see, heated and cooled seats here in the second row, which is highlighted by a pair of captain's chairs. 
which comes in all but two trims. Basically, the base model and the step up base model will come with seven passenger. The rest of them come in this six passenger configuration that you see here. And these higher level trims also have power, which is nice because by the press of a button, you can see that the seat nicely goes forward, giving you easier access to that third row. And speaking of third row, let's see what it's like to get back there. So sitting back here, again, I'm not the tallest person out there, but it's so much more comfortable than most of the current seven passenger SUVs out there. I would say it's very similar to the Tesla Model X6 passenger configuration in size, but getting in and out is very easy with these seats folding forward in a very similar fashion to higher trim vehicles. And then like I showed you when we were in the back of the vehicle, it's nice because this seat reclines and sits forward depending on if you want more storage space back there or you want more comfort and the seat it's nicely up above the ground unlike some other vehicles out there that i will not mention here so it's a pretty comfortable third row if i'm being honest and then here in the second row i gotta be honest this is a super comfortable seat here in the second row again higher trim the seats are a little bit nicer but this is a seat that you could go on a very long road trip without any issues having that power to be able to recline or to sit up a little bit more and then the comfort of cooled seats that's a home run in my book. There's also some other things to point out back here that are kind of unique to this vehicle. Pretty cool, actually. Um, now, I have seen these before where the USB is right here, and these are USB-C. So nice to have these right here where your kids are going to have their tablets anyways. And because of the way that this is set up, you can already see how this is going to be easy to attach an iPad for younger passengers. But check this out. I don't know why I like this so much, but it's pretty cool. So back here, we can actually open up a table for these two seats back here. And if we actually close the lid, but open the bottom, we can see the storage. So all the games, iPads, all that stuff, when you're at your destination, you can put them in there, tuck them away nicely, out of sight, out of mind. Another pretty cool feature here, there are some buttons here, so we can actually give ourselves some more room if absolutely necessary. We can pivot the seat forward and back, and we can do the recline as well. I don't know if that's a good feature or not, depending on how well behaved your children are, but pretty cool that it's there nonetheless. Pretty cool roof in here too. I really like that most cars are going away from actually opening sunroofs here in the front. This one does open, which is great, but also back here, it's hard to see because of how dark it is, but this screen actually opens all the way back to here. So you have a very sizable, sunroof here for your back passengers and having had dark interiors before in big SUVs this really opens up the space on the inside makes it much more comfortable much more roomy on the inside when it does do that also in this GT line this is a butter soft this is really nice headliner it's actually very like plush it's not Alcantara but it's like some sort of a suede it's very nice and uh, definitely would be a nice feature. Also, one thing I do want to point out, you can also see here these vents right here. Something that I want to mention, even on the base trim, you get three zone climate, which is really nice. So in the base trim, you'll have driver and passenger zone, and then you'll have a different zone for the rear, even in the base trim. So not everybody is stuck with the same temperature in the car. Now, this is actually one of the highlights of this vehicle. The cab in this, I don't know if you heard that, but the doors, close and make a really nice sound by the way but the cab of this is really comfortable it's set up really nice it's also allowed maximum space for storage without leaving things to roll around so for example if we look here on the floor we can see not only is this space available because there's no transmission but they put a nice compartment here so perhaps your wife might want to put her purse here without it rolling over underneath your foot while you're driving which is nice you also have limited buttons here so not too much but just all the right things that you might need access to right here up front you have a charging dock right here and then as we look a little bit of additional storage not a lot but that's okay because we get that in the back also you can slide this close if you want to clean things up a little bit manual twisting air vents here as you're used to and then this very nice landscape display it's actually two displays built into one you have your instrumentation right here and then you'll have your media center over here where you can control all the features of the vehicle limited buttons again you have volume temperature and your climate control here 
And then down below, we can see our power center is what I like to call it, but you can turn on and off these different plugs here. And then you can also access a 12 volt right there as well. So you're able to charge all of your goodies in this vehicle. Now looking over at the steering wheel, this is where things start to get a little bit weird, but most cars just, there's no consistent way to do this. This is new to me though, having a couple additional buttons down here where you can change the drive mode and you can also add in four wheel lock if it's a four, all wheel drive vehicle. So if you're in snow or whatever, and then interestingly enough, we have paddle shifters in an electric vehicle, which is definitely unique but I have started to see this show up in a few vehicles. I'm not sure how I feel about that, but I suppose um, there's gotta be a good use case for it. With an electric car, you have all the torque whenever you want it. I don't know why you would ever need that. Other than that, everything else is pretty standard. We have all of our communication over here, controlling the screen. And then over here on the left, we have our cruise control, and then also changing some of the information that's displayed on the screen in front of us. So looking at this as a whole, quite honestly, the EV9 on paper is a home run in my opinion. This is a fantastic car in so many regards. Now, that does come with some drawbacks and these are real drawbacks. Right now we're kind of in this awkward period where pricing is high, capability is kind of mid, and this car is unfortunately no exception to that. It's a lot of money for the performance you're getting. However, performance aside, you're getting a lot of car itself for the money. So to be able to get this kind of interior space, you're basically talking Model X money and base model Model X is $79,990. So the same price as the top trim of the Kia. Now that will get you quite a bit more range than this. However, once you get down to the lower trim levels, this has a ton of value for the space. As a matter of fact, every time I see one of these in person, I think again, I might really want to consider this car because it just, it's more traditional on the inside of what you're probably used to. It's comfortable. I've driven one and I'll be getting a video for you on that in it, but it drives nice too. And unlike some vehicles out there, Kia has decided ultrasonic sensors are still needed here in 2024, which is appreciated of course, but they've also got radar. They've also got vision, all these systems working together to make this a safe vehicle too. And for your family needs, you're gonna be hard pressed in 2024 to find this type of value in this footprint. And with that, I do hope that this review was helpful. I hope that you learned something about the EV9 and I cannot wait to catch you on the next one.